Columbia. Uh, and again, this, so this is going to be for uh, northern Appanoose County and then at least the eastern half of Monroe County. So again, northern Appanoose County, eastern half of Monroe County. Again, all these boxes, the red boxes, are tornado warnings that a cell might be producing a tornado. We've got four of them in the area right now. Uh, again, the weakest one is the one in Keokuk County, though the cell is not, again, I don't want you to think it's a weak thunderstorm. It's still a strong thunderstorm. It looks like it's weakened a little bit, but because that rotation hasn't dropped completely, we're going to keep that tornado warning in effect until that rotation goes away completely. We're going to take a closer look at this cell just to the uh, right around the Centerville area. It might be in Centerville right now as this uh, storm has intensified. We need to take a closer look at that. Uh, so let's, we're going to zoom in a little bit tighter uh, on this cell. Now that, these yellow boxes are severe thunderstorm warnings. Those aren't tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings. That still means damaging wind gusts and hail are possible. But the red boxes are the area of greatest concern because that's where we might have potential tornadoes. Uh, we're going to zoom in tight on this to get a really close view. And we're going to have to turn on our rotation products to get a better idea of where that potential tornado could be. Uh, we're going to use this product, probably going to be working the best for us. And that's just to the north of Centerville. See this area where the green and red are meeting? That's where the possible tornado would be. The, what this is showing you is the direction of winds in relation to the radar. The green winds are going towards the radar. The red is away from the radar. And so where you have those two meeting, that means there's rotation. Wind's going in two opposite directions, and that means you have rotation. It's at least a rotating thunderstorm. And because this is a tight enough rotation, it's enough rotation. That means you could have a funnel cloud and also a tornado. That's just to the north of the Centerville area. So Center if you live just the north of Centerville, you need to be taking action right now because this cell is going to be moving into Monroe County. It's going to be exiting... Uh, the southern, the, exiting the northern portion of Appanoose County and then moving on into Monroe County. Uh, latest movement seems to be moving in the same direction the other storms were uh, over in the eastern half of our area. Uh, movement is still roughly about 50, 55 miles per hour and mainly to the north. There's a little bit of an easterly component, but mainly a northerly movement. So that means Moravia, you're under the gun for this. And uh, certainly avoid travel along Route 5 right now uh, because that cell looks like it's going to be moving right over Route 5. So do not drive north. If you're in Centerville, uh, you're okay to drive south, but do not drive north right now uh, because you might right, drive right into the path of this tornado. And we're getting a strong indication based on this signature, there's a very good chance that a tornado could be on the ground right now just to the north of Centerville and then Moravia would be the next under the gun, and then it would continue on into at least the southern portion of uh, Monroe County, uh, and we'll have to see if that would include Albia or not. We're going to have to see how the movement of this storm evolves. So again, if it moves more due north, Albia more under the threat. If we get a little more of an easterly jog, Albia will be missed. But Moravia, it's time to take action right now. Uh, and again, you can see this area right here. That's where the tornado is, and it's going to continue up into the north and northeast at around 50 miles per hour. So we're going to do a little bit of timing on this cell as well. Since we've been doing it to those eastern cells, we want to talk about this cell as well. Uh, we're going to get our pan tool out here and make sure I have enough room to talk about the communities impacted. Notice that Albia, again, is close. We're going to have to see how much of an easterly jog it takes, but we want to keep that in mind that it could include the Albia area. So let me give myself enough room here and then we're going to talk about the timing. Uh, we're going to use the cone tool and we're going to go from this heart of this rotation where the most likely location is right now and we're going to go out from there mainly to the north and northeast. I want to include Albia. Uh, we're going to have to make, give myself a little bit more room. Ignore those numbers real quick. It'll zoom out just a touch more uh, to get a better idea of the timing. Again, these things are moving very quickly, which is good and bad. Gets it out of the area quicker, but also gives you less time to take action. Uh, so let's grow back and go from the center of the rotation and draw it out. Yeah, it's roughly there. There. Uh, now, it does list Oskaloosa here. It's a little too early to take action in Oskaloosa, but for Moravia, uh, an estimated arrival time around 4.18, uh, so that is now just about 11 minutes away from arriving there. Now also, Albia is still included in this. If it continues to move on this direct path, Albia would be under gun. That would be around 4.30 or so, so we're going to have to watch that very closely. Severe thunderstorm warning for Van Buren canceled. Okay. 
So they canceled the severe thunderstorm warning for Van Buren County. That's where a tornado warning was initially issued, uh, but that style has now, is now departing the area. We had very heavy rain reported around the Kiyosakwa area, likely some hail associated with that cell too. The information is coming in quickly here, uh, and we're also waiting on any spotter report uh, stuff, uh, that they can confirm that these tornadoes are on the ground, but we're seeing strong indications on radar, and radar uh, is a very good tool for us and often gives us a very good idea if there's a tornado, and that's what we're seeing, and that's why these tornado warnings have been issued. Uh, so the uh, estimated time would be in Albia around 4.30. We're going to keep a very close eye on that as the cell over the next 10 minutes or so. We'll get a better idea of its exact movement, if it's going to go right over the heart of Albia at the very least, it'll probably move over the eastern portion uh, of the Albia area. If you live just due east of Albia, there's a good chance that this tornado worn cell, a cell that could be producing a tornado, could be moving over your area. But it's Moravia that needs to be taking action right now and getting to that safe spot that I've been discussing. Uh, again, if you're just joining our coverage, I know if you've been watching, I might sound like a little bit of a broken record, but new people are always joining our coverage. We're in severe weather coverage right now, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, because we have multiple tornado warnings in effect for the area. And our policy here is to remain on the air as long as there is a tornado threat for our immediate viewing area. And that's certainly what we're seeing here with multiple tornado warnings in effect. Uh, it's a very dangerous situation. We're going to be bringing you the latest information, keeping you updated here on uh, Fox 15. So we're going to go back to the general radar view because I've been showing you the velocity product, which really pinpoints rotation the best. But also notice these, these shades of purple that are showing up. That's also very large hail associated with the cell, which is not unusual. Oftentimes you'll get a tornado-worn storm that'll produce tornado and also very large hail because it's rotating thunderstorms that produce the biggest hail, and that seems to be what we're seeing too. So I've been talking about this cell just to the north of Centerville and approaching the Albia area, and we're going to be, at the very least, Albia is going to be getting some rain out of this and some lightning. Keep in mind there's a lot of lightning associated with these cells too. But I also don't want to ignore the uh, cells that are off to the eastern part. Now, at Tumway, you're in the clear right now. And in fact, based on the movement of this cell, I don't think it's going to arrive in the Atumwa area unless you live uh, over uh, in the western half to the west of Atumwa. There's still a potential it might scrape the western half of Wapolo County. But the heart of Atumwa looks to be in the clear for now. We'll have to see how any other cells uh, develop. Uh, but really, an uh, uh, interesting situation over the eastern half of our area right now. Uh, because we have multiple cells uh, very close together. Now, the way these cells interact can be interesting because oftentimes when they're close together, one cell strengthens while the other weaken. And usually it's the southern cell that ends up being the strongest because it's getting all that warm, moist air directly into it. Now, what's happening with this cell, it's weakening some because it's sucking in rain-cooled air from this storm. This storm is throwing down some very cold air, and these thunderstorms feed off warm humid air. They like that warm, sticky air, uh, which you probably felt out there. Even though it's a little bit cooler today, there's still some fairly good humidity uh, and still certainly conditions that are conducive for these thunderstorms to form. Well, we have rain-cooled air that's being sucked into the inflow of this storm, and that's what's weakening it some. So the threat for this cell, which again, to pinpoint, is approaching Washington County. Uh, this is in the northern part of Jefferson County. It is weakening some. So we may end up seeing this tornado warning dropped. It's still got some rotation associated with it, though, so we don't want to rule it out yet. And sometimes these storms pulse in strength. But right now, it looks like the more... A uh, dangerous storm is this one, and notice that shade of purple there. That is some serious hail coming down just to the east of Salem. In fact, if we, we switch on our hail product tool here, uh, you can pinpoint. It gives you an estimate of what the hail size is. Now, I should mention that it tends to overestimate just a little bit and it tends to be a little bit of a delayed product. So now that hail is actually due east of the Salem area. But based on this, uh, about five minutes ago, uh, our hail algorithm was pointing out that maybe hail, uh, or at least of an inch and a half, maybe two inches. Again, that would be the high end, maybe a couple two-inch stones. But more likely, you're going to be seeing stones around an inch and a half in diameter. But keep in mind, that's close to the size of golf balls. Uh, so that is still a significant threat, and that will certainly do damage. This is a very dangerous Cell. The rest of Monroe County has been included in the tornado warning. That's this red box here. Now, farther to the south, it's severe thunderstorm warning, but it's this area right here, Albia, and just to the east of Albia, where a tornado has been confirmed by law enforcement now. First, it was just radar indication, but now a police officer has spotted a tornado that was on the ground. Uh, so we're going to zoom in real close uh, where this warning is in effect, and it's moving to the east at five miles per hour. 
So if it continued to move to the east, yeah, Wapolo County would be impacted, but this is a very slow moving storm. Let's bring up the, the uh, rotation tools and identify where this thing would be. Uh, it was reported just to the west of Albia, and it's right in here. This little notch here would be where that tornado would be. Uh, we're going to switch over to another tool here. Uh, this is a, a, a similar tool, but sometimes actually does a little bit better when the storms are slow moving. And again, you do have a general area of rotation right here to the west of Albia. That's what is being indicated here. In fact, I think I like this tool a little bit more. Another thing that we look at sometimes is uh, a product that we call correlation coefficient. That's just a technical term. Um, but it sometimes will help us see if there's any debris flying around. Now, we're not seeing that right now. If there was debris, we'd see a little blue spot right here. It's kind of like our debris finder tool. It's technical term being correlation coefficient. It's a dual pole radar product. Uh, the good news is we're not seeing any signature of debris in the air. Doesn't mean the tornado is not occurring, though, because we're still certainly seeing rotation. Another tool we like to use is the shear tool, which tells us where there are winds in different directions. And that is what it continues this tornado warning, and particularly right here to the west of Albion. Notice that darker shade, that light blue. That is still indicating a wind shear. So winds out of the surf at the surface in one direction, winds aloft in another direction, and that's what causes a spin. And can that spin can sometimes reach all the way to ground and produce a tornado. And according to a law, of, uh, a police officer, a tornado is on the ground just to the west of Albia, right in this area. Let's go back to that storm uh, relative velocity product again, a tool that helps us spot where that rotation is again, and that would be right in this area here. And it would be continuing, again, the storm was over here and really has moved due east. And initially, it looked like it was moving to the southeast. It, the storm in general was moving this way, but has been held up by storms to the south, and that has caused it to come on a collision path with Albia. Again, a repeat of what might be have occurred last year. You're probably hearing the tornado sirens in Otumwa right now going off because the tornado warning is in effect. So if you're in Otumwa or really the north, uh, the northeastern portion of Wapolo County, now is the time to get to that safe spot. And just to review, so we're talking about the biggest concern. There's strong winds for this entire line, uh, but it's really Wapolo County that we're most concerned about right now. This is the information you need to know. I'm briefly switching uh, to this graphic here. If you live in Ottumwa or the northeastern portion of Wapolo County, I want you to take action now. I want you to get to your basement or a storm shelter if you have that. If you don't have a basement, you don't have a storm shelter, and get to the lowest floor of your home and an interior room. You want to put as many walls between you and the outside of your home as possible. An interior bathroom, an interior closet works best. You want it to be a windowless room, a room without windows. Those interior bathrooms and closets are perfect because they typically don't have windows. Uh, if you're in a bathroom, get in the bathtub if you have a bathtub in that interior bathroom. That's one more layer to protect you. On your way to that safe room, if you know where any helmets are, whether it's a motorcycle helmet or a bicycle helmet, if you use helmets for rollerblading, whatever it may be, if you know where helmets are in your house and can easily access them, grab that, put those on your head for, to protect your head. We are always concerned about head injuries and tornadoes. Uh, that tends to, those tend to be the injuries that can potentially be fatal. And again, this is a tornado that could, uh, based on what we're seeing on radar, this, we could be talking about wind gusts around up to 110 miles per hour. That could cause exterior walls to fail. If you're in that interior room, though, you'll likely be okay, but there could be flying debris around. You could be a situation where the roof is removed from the house, uh, and then that debris would be flying around. So that's why you really want to protect your head. If you don't know where the helmets are, don't go looking for them. If you don't know where they are right away, go ahead and get to that interior room and then cover your head. Curl yourself up into a ball. You want to minimize your body space as much as possible. Now, the the one exception, uh, the one reason you should get out of your house would be if you live in a mobile home or trailer. Then you need to get out. I want you to get out of that mobile home or trailer, get in your car, and drive to the nearest permanent building. You don't want to be in your car for long because car is not a safe place to be in a tornado. Uh, tornadoes uh, can easily flip over a car, push it off the road. Uh, that's a dangerous uh, situation. And I've got uh, Steve Horsmeyer handing me additional information right now, uh, pretty much uh, getting updates right now on the line of severe thunderstorms that are moving across. Again, uh, the entire area is eventually going to be under at least a severe thunderstorm warning because uh, there are very strong straight line winds along the entire line. But we're tornado watch. And uh, it does look like the tornado watch has been extended east. There were some of our eastern counties 
in our viewing area are talking about Des Moines County, Lee County. You were in under that tornado watch, and it now looks like that you have been included in the tornado watch because of this ongoing tornado threat. Now, most aren't going to see a tornado. Most are just going to see uh, straight line winds, but that could be anywhere from 60 to 70 mile per hour winds that can still do damage, bring down trees, power lines. That's going to be uh, a threat for our entire area, but it's Wapalo County. Uh, this information holds to for that tornado warning. So let's switch back to the radar now that we've brought you up to speed on what you should be doing right now in Ottumwa. Uh, and again, we might see some modification of this warning box. Uh, we are getting radar scans every five minutes, but the potential tornado would be approaching the Ottumwa area. It may stay just to the south of downtown Ottumwa, but the bottom line here is if you're in the Ottumwa area, you need to be in that safe spot right now. And